Hello ladies and gents, this is another video brought to you by Ants Hood. Today's video is going to have the results of my Fidoli Noda Queen experiment. Now, people have been going crazy asking me questions about how this is going on, and you will find out today. And of course, if you stick around to the end, you'll find out who are the winners of my 1,000 subs giveaway. So stick around to the end and find out if it's you. And I do have a little bit of an apology to make. My dog is not leaving my side because I've been away for the best part of three weeks and she's got a nasty habit of snoring. So if you can hear in the background, I do apologize now, my snorry dog. As you can see, it's still the same from my last video. The outworld is still an issue because it is way too small now. As you can see in this video here, it is just ram packed of queens, of workers, of majors, miners, and their trash heap as well. So I really need to look at getting this changed. Hopefully when they'll get the money for the overtime I've been doing, I can afford one finally and then put them in a big outworld. This is the tube, and if you see the, ne but look at the nests. The nest has still got bags of space. So I wouldn't say it's because I haven't got enough nest space for them. I don't know why they're chilling out in the outworld. It's kind of annoying. Now this is the bottom nest. Now I might as well call this the queen's lair. There's a fresh queen there, look at that. That's kind of disappointing as well, because I've got enough queens as it is. I don't need any bloody more of them. But anyway, as you can see here, this is kind of like the queen's nest, because yeah, you've got plenty of workers, but it's rammed full of queens. Can't really appreciate it here, but trust me, you will see them all. Oh, there they all go. You can see there, just at the far, there you go, zoomed in a bit. There's plenty of queens here. I don't know how many I've got. There is far too many to count. I've got all these here. I've got them all in the outworld, and I've got some in the top uh, nest as well. So it's quite the pain to try and figure it out, but I'm probably pushing about 100 queens, if not more. You can also see, which you've just passed a little second ago, there is actually brood down here as well. With the amount of queens it here, I'd expect to see more brood, but there isn't that. Still is lurking in the top nest, but there's not many queens in the top nest, so I'm assuming that most of the reproductors are down here. I don't know what they're doing with it, because uh, generally speaking, when you get brood, it generally hangs around where the fertile queens are in, in most nests, but these guys just seem to be doing their own thing. Maybe they're just weird because they're like their owners, a bit weird. Am I weird? Yeah, I'm totally weird. I love ants. But I will tell you what is slightly surprising is the amount of brood that I've got. Because I've got plenty of workers and I've got plenty of all varying sizes, majors and minors, you can clearly see from here. But there's not a great deal of brood and you'll see that in the next video when I go up to the top nest that there isn't a great deal of brood. But I've just been around this complete nest now and you can see the situation that the bottom one's in. So let's have a look at the top nest. If we look in the top nest here, there isn't the kind of level of brood that we've seen before. It looks like there's not a lot, but when I zoom in, you can see it a lot better. Now, I'm tending to think this is just a brood to stabilize their numbers because they are at the top end of what Fidoli's get to, which is around 3,000 strong, um, and they're about that now. And the brood's probably reflecting that just to tick over the numbers because I don't see a massive drop off, um, even though the brood's massively dropped off. And don't forget, Fidoli workers don't generally live that long, but they've also got a quick turnaround of brood around 28 days for miners, especially. So, I think they're just maintaining the numbers now at the top end of what they are, but there's a male there you've just seen. I've clearly started to develop more elites, which I clearly don't need because I've got thousands of queens as it is. But if you look here, there's some brood that's nicely piled up there, and there is some more brood around here, yet yeah, around here as well. But mainly when we come through here, you've got a bit more there, and then most of the brood is as normal is in this chamber. Now, I'm not sure how thick this is with brood, but I'd say there's a good couple of layers of them as well. So there is plenty of brood there, just not the massive numbers that I used to have. I also must apologize if you hear me howling in the background, that is the cat trying to get in. I've got the neediest cat in the world who thinks it's a dog that can sit there meowing at doors until we open it. And look at that, as soon as I let him in, he wants to go back out again. What a douche. Now this is their current setup for the separated queens. Now if you haven't seen the video where I talk about this queen experiment and what I intend to achieve with it, I'll put a link in the top right corner now so you can check it out. So when I first separated them off, it only took a couple of days and they produced these eggs here. As you can see here, a nice little fresh batch of eggs. I got all excited because it could have so many ramifications with all the queens, such as they might be setting up satellite nests and wanting to spread out, which means it's great. It means I can have multiple Connollys and keep them constantly going, which would have been brilliant. It also indicated that they were actually inbreeders, which is not a lot of information about Fidoli Nodas or Nodas, if you know these kind of people, um, about them inbreeding. So it would have answered questions like that. So, because obviously all my queens have pulled the wings off, haven't they? So I would have answered those questions too. Also, if they were fertile and they were still going out hunting, which they clearly did, then the question is, well, they're not let, set up in a satellite nest, so why are they putting valuable queens in harm's way? So everything was riding on this. Are these queens fertile? Two months down the line, and I've got the answer. And the answer is no. 
I don't think they are. This is the batch of eggs. I'm not saying it's the same batch of eggs. I'm saying it's a batch of eggs. And clearly, if it is the same, then they are not developing. Uh, they have been protein hungry to the max. Every time I put a small baby roach in there, or a nymph, whatever they call them, they devoured it, they destroyed it. They've been very proactive hunters, and yet the brood is still not developing. And I'm sorry about the image, the test tubes are dirty and it's difficult to film clearly. So this tells me the queens are probably not fertile. They lay the eggs, but the eggs clearly don't develop. They're clearly clean, they've clearly been looked after, but they're still not developing. So I'm gonna go down the line that these guys are infertile. So is this experiment over? Not yet. The reason for that is, I want to be 100% sure, so what I am going to do, again, is separate some more queens, probably three this time, and a load of workers, and do the experiment again. Now, you might ask, why am I doing that? It's because I may not have got a fertile queen, one could argue, because don't forget, one of the queens did have a wing still attached, or partial wing still attached when I separated her off to indicate that she was a new young queen. I am going to look at the more mature queens in there and pulling them out. And not only that though, it's also important for any experiment or any like astronomical identification of something, it needs confirming. So what I want to do is separate some more queens off and confirm that I get the same results after two months of the brood doesn't, if they lay brood that is, they don't, eggs that is, should I say, and they don't develop, then 100% confirmed they are not fertile, they are acting as major workers and going off and doing their stuff. Yet again, I think the questions are still there to be answered, but I think I've answered them now, such as um, the fertility of these queens, if they're inbreeders, etc. But, like I said, wait out, wait and see, because you might find I get different results. If I do, by all means, I'm going to blast it all over the channel so you guys can see. To transfer them over, all I did was pick up the water feeder, liquid feeder that's in the old outworld, or the main outworld, should I say, and because it, it had workers all attached to it. Yes, there is one running around, but that was just a loose one that I put in there, um, and then tapped it in. As you can see, I've got about seven queens and about seven majors, because they're the larders and they store all the food and stuff, so they're important as well. And I've got a load of workers. You can see probably about 50 or so workers at a guess. So this is a much bigger um, experiment with queens and stuff that I did for my last one. So let's see how this one gets on. Just for transparency as well, I didn't add the old experiment back into the main nest <clears throat> until I'd got these out. So I didn't get the same queens twice as it were. Not only that though, those workers were starting to age, so they weren't probably likely to last long. So I put them back into the outworld so they can spend the rest of their days with their family. Now, once I was happy that the new the new experiment, should I say, had been put aside, I left that to the side, and then I put the old experiment or the queens back in with the main work, the main nest, as you can see here. All I'm doing is that's a little tube that I've disconnected and I had a worker in, just tapped it in, and I very unceremoniously get the test tube and tap it all in. Everything went in that was in there: workers, brew, uh, the eggs, and stuff like that. So if those eggs do develop now, they will be in the main nest, and I won't see it. Now, you don't really, I know it's a bit shaky at the moment, but what I, I'm not sure if you can see my face in this or not when I lean over, but what I am doing now is checking to make sure that the queens aren't being attacked by the old workers. I have put workers from here back into the old experiment to boost the numbers a little bit, worker-wise, and there was no issues, but I just wanted, here I am, I just wanted to make sure that everything was okay with these guys. And I can safely say there was no attacking, they just got accepted straight into the Connolly. So even it's been two months since those queens have been separated, they clearly hold the same scent, the same colonial Connolly scent. So definitely able to connect my old ones back in when I need to. Now, ladies and gents, it is the giveaway time. Worth a total of £230. Now, you cannot believe how long it's took me to work this out because my maths is not my strong point and it's simple maths and I couldn't even get that right. So if it's not £230, it's almost or around £230. But I need to say this time to say a big thank you to the retailers that have kindly offered vouchers to help celebrate my 1,000 subs for this channel. And they are... Sid from Wakushi, who's kindly donated a £50 voucher, which is one of the top prizes, a £30 voucher, and two £10 vouchers. So thank you for Wakushi. Tom from Ants Davy has kindly donated a £50 voucher, which is one of the top prizes as well. Rich from Ant Antics is also donated a top prize of £50, which is awesome. And finally, Tracy from the Ant Lady, who's kindly donated one of the second top prizes of £30. Now, if you are one of the winners, what you need to do is get in contact with me via 
Facebook, either get on my group and then uh, message me from there or from Instagram. And I need you to take a screenshot to prove that you're subscribed to my channel. The reason for this is when I try to verify if these people that have actually won were subscribed, as that was one of the conditions, if they haven't got their subscriptions on public viewing, I can't see that they're subscribed to my channel. So please, that is an extra condition I've had to put on and I apologize but it's a need to make sure it's a fair competition. I was absolutely blown away that 76 people actually entered the competition. So a big thank you to all you guys. Now let's see who the winners are. So let's do this alphabetically. So for the top prize of 50 pounds from Antantix, let's spin the wheel and find out who the winner is. A big congratulations to Toby, you have won a £50 voucher from Antantix and our top prize winner today. Don't forget to get in contact with me via Facebook or Instagram and send me a screenshot to prove to me that you are subscribed. Now let's get on to the next spin. So this next voucher is going to be from Antantix and worth £50. So let's see who the winner's going to be. And it is, oh no. It's Big Ross. Big Ross, you're only getting the £50 voucher and no foot fetish photos of my feet. Anyway, time to move on to the next spin. Now this one's the £50 voucher and the last of the top prizes from Wakushi. Let's see who the winner is. I hope I can pronounce it because there's some names here I can't pronounce. Oh, it looks like... it look, <laughs> I hope I pronounce this right. The Horde. You know what to do, mate. Message me. Screenshot and that 50 pound voucher is yours. Now we've got two second prizes worth 30 pounds and the first one's from the Ant Lady and let's see who the winner is. Let's see if I pronounce this right. F Mahu. Now if I've just butchered your name, I do apologize, but you know who you are. So message me on Facebook or Instagram with that screenshot and that 30 pound voucher is yours. But let's do the second second top prize from Wakushi, which is also £30, and that winner is, oh, this is a close one, oh, Ant World, you know what to do, matey, I've said it several times, and let's move on to the next bin, and the third prize is for a £10 voucher from Wakushi, and let's see who the winner is going to be of this one, bearing in mind it's two £10 from Wakushi, and it is... It's Paul. Paul's actually one of my Patreons, so well done to Paul, matey. I will be in contact with you to find out your details to send you the voucher. And I swear, that wasn't a fix. You guys see me do that, that was fair and square. So for the final prize of £10 Wakushi voucher, this prize goes to, and it's another one, easy one for me to read, the Ant Connolly. By all means, matey, please message me via Facebook and Instagram, and you too can have a prize. But that's it for today then, guys. And I do want to take this opportunity to yet again say a big thank you to Ant Antics, Ant Stavey, the Ant Lady, and Wakushi for donating those vouchers so I can do it for my giveaway. But not just for the vouchers. I need to thank them as well for their continued support of my channel, which they have continued to do since I was a little wee content creator with less than 100 um, subscribers. So a big thank you to them. And finally, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters who have also supported my channel massively. That's Adam W, Adrian, Antantix, Anton Rock, Antimaya, David D, Jason W, Kevin R, Paul A, Pavance, PJ Grant and Makushi. And if you want to become a Patreon supporter, please check out the description down below. I'm not sure if you heard that halfway through there, but that douchebag cat decided to meow. And he's still going for it. But that's it for today then, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye for now.